Hello and welcome to OpenShift Serverless, today with part one, Knative Serving. My name is Ortwin Schneider. I'm working as a technical marketing manager at the hybrid platforms business unit at Red Hat. And my focus is on serverless, service mesh and creating solution patterns. So first, let us start with what is serverless? So serverless is a deployment and development model for cloud native applications, which avoids any server management tasks and, and requirements. That means letting developers really focus on delivering applications without worrying about the underlying platform they run on. These applications usually follow an event driven architecture to communicate between each other, but this is not really mandatory. Serverless is very well suited for uh, asynchronous and stateless applications, especially if you have unpredictable workloads. Here you see the um, diagram of the OpenShift container platform with um, the operating system. There is the Kubernetes container management system, some additional cluster services. And then we have um, layered services on top of that, for example, the platform services. And you see that OpenShift serverless is part of uh, the platform services and um, it comes with no additional cost. It is fully supported and it is an optional component. So you can just install it into your OpenShift environment through an operator and start with developing serverless um, applications. OpenShift serverless is an abstraction layer, as mentioned, on top of Red Hat OpenShift container platform, which allows developers to start deploying applications in a standardized way. It is based on the Knative open source project and it provides a uniform integrated interface across the hybrid cloud ecosystem. OpenShift serverless has three main components, um, each having its own distinct responsibilities. There is Knative serving. This component is really in charge of deployment and automatic scaling of your applications. Then there is Knative eventing. This really brings a complete eventing infrastructure for consuming and producing events. And there is Knative function, functions. Um, serverless functions, they are even a, a simpler approach to cloud native development. So a function is a very specific, simple unit of code, which takes input, it executes some business logic and it returns an output. So from a developer pers perspective, you focus on implementing the function and you offload all the other details to the underlying platform. The official operator provides a quick and simple installation process, and it has been tested for really good integration with other Red Hat OpenShift products. Both Knative Serving and Knative Eventing, they consist of a series of components packaged as containers and a set of custom resource definitions, which are actually the APIs for um, OpenShift serverless. The primary way to interact with OpenShift serverless is through YAML files, where you declaratively define the intended state of your serverless applications. There is also the imperative way of doing it to interact with serverless deployments, either by using the Knative um, command line tool, the CLI, or through the Red Hat OpenShift web console. Today, we want to focus on Knative serving and this component is really responsible for deploying, updating, and routing traffic to your applications, as well as auto-scaling your applications. So Knative Serving creates new deployments and new revisions on new versions of each of your applications. So it rolls out new versions to ensure that traffic is only redirected to working revisions of your application. So the pods are created by these deployments and they receive traffic as they become available. Knative Serving supports also blue-green deployments, canary and progressive deployments. When there is no traffic, Knative Serving is able to scale down the application pods to zero. And the next thing is we want to have a look at Knative Serving, how it looks in reality. So let us have a look at the demo. I have an OpenShift cluster running here and Knative is already installed in this cluster. You see we have 
um, three namespaces here, Canadian Eventing, Serving, Ingress. And the first thing we want to make sure is if the installation is correct. So what we do is we check the Knative Serving resource for the conditions. This is um, in the Knative Serving um, namespace. And we should see the status of true for all the different conditions like deployments available and so on. So this looks good. The next thing we could check are the pods in the Knative Serving namespace. And we see there is a bunch of uh, pods running here. So we have activator, different autoscalers, domain mapping and webhooks. And you should see everywhere um, a running status and a ready status. So this also looks good. And the other thing is the Knative Serving Ingress namespace. There we have the Ingress gateways based on courier and the same here. So they should all be running there. So this looks good and it means Knative um, Serving is installed correctly. So we could directly get started. So the first thing we do, we create a new project, Knative Serving Demo. And you see it directly also in the web console here. Let us jump into this project and go to the topology view. So there isn't anything in there so far. We've just created the namespace. So the first thing we want to do is really create a Knative service. We use the CLI here and we say, okay, we want to create a service and name it Quarkus REST API, specify an image and optionally a port. This is um, a Quarkus native compiled uh, yeah, REST API. And yeah, that's the only thing you could do here. Just um, hitting enter and create this um, serverless service. And this means it will pull the, um, applica the, the application image and um, set up all the artifacts, networking and so on. We see there is a running pod here and we also see, oh, it is running um, in the web console as well, right? So um, let us bring that a little bit here to the left side probably. So now we have a um, serverless application running. Now we can check, for example, the, the services. We can list the services. You can see, okay, this is our Quarkus REST API service with our endpoint URL. We can access the service from outside. Um, we can list the revisions. So this is the very first deployment. So we have currently one revision and all the traffic is going to the first revision. All conditions are okay. And we can also list the routes. So our access points to our services. This is this one. And uh, another interesting thing is if we use the tree plugin of kubectl, um, we can see uh, what a Knative service really owns. So where the dependencies are. So this is what we've created. This here is the Knative service and each Knative service has a configuration, just this, and the configuration can have multiple revisions. So this is our very first revision here and each revision has a deployment, a replica set and several pods based on the auto scaling, right? As well as an image and also each um, revision has its own pot autoscaler. That gives you a lot of flexibility in a sense that you can configure a different autoscaling behavior per revision. Um, the pot autoscaler also owns things like a metric and serverless service. So the metric is, for example, this is kind of the, the configuration of the metrics collector for the autoscaler. Then there is an abstraction layer for Kubernetes services, which is serverless service where you have like private and public endpoints and the actual uh, endpoints uh, behind it. And each service also has a route configuration, basically the, the ingress configuration. And all that stuff is created by the Knative platform for you. So the only thing we've done is just one command to create the actual service and the platform cares about all the rest, um, setting things up, networking and so on. So um, another thing I want to show you in this demo is how you could use the CLI to create um, YAML files or a declarative way of, of doing things. So um, you can specify a target and point to any folder. In our case, so I just pointed to the local folder and I create a new service with this image in this namespace. And this results really in creating um, several folders um, locally. It doesn't apply anything um, on server side. So if we 
really look at my local folder here. So this is what's been created. So there's a Kinetic Serving folder, there's a um, KSVC subfolder, and there we have a YAML file. And now I can edit this YAML file and, and modify the, the way I want it, uh, configure everything that I need and apply it as any other um, resource I would do. So let us just open it so I could just go with uh, WI in it. You see this is a Knative Serving um, service and now I could start um, specifying all the things I need like um, the different scaling behaviors, uh, specifying health checks and so on. We don't do anything right here. I just quit, wanted just to show you this. And then I could just apply this one, the YAML file to, uh, to the server. And you see now there is a pod coming up and we see it also here in the web console. There is now our second serverless service and it is running. So this way you could also use the CLI to um, create your uh, resources and use a declarative approach, which is kind of the default behavior. Um, another thing by default, Knative services, they are accessible um, from, outside the uh, from outside the cluster. Um, so there is a public route available in the Knative serving ingress namespace, but if you want to have services really accessible only within the cluster, you can specify um, them as cluster local, like I do here. So we update now our offline service to be um, accessible only within the cluster. We have done that. And we can also check now the routes in um, Knative Serving Ingress. So there shouldn't be any route for our offline service. And that's true. The only thing we see here is this. And this is our REST API endpoint, which is public available. And um, yeah, so that's it just for showing you kind of the offline capabilities also. We delete now um, the service, we don't need it anymore. And um, proceed with um, our Quarkus REST API. Let us just get the route and then we can um, in our case, we just um, access our service um, with curl. It is a post uh, endpoint gateway announces we access and this will trigger the service to scale up from zero. If I entered this, you see, okay, now the pod is coming up, it's scaling up and now we have also the answer here. So this is kind of the behavior. Mm. Now let us have a look at um, the auto scaling of Knative Serving. So first of all, there is a, a, a configuration, a global configuration for Knative. And this is um, configured in a config map named config autoscaler in the Knative Serving namespace. So if we have a look at this specific config map, we see the global configuration. So let us scroll up a little bit. And there you see like we have different configs here and um, for example, initial scale, allow zero initial scale, and so on. So this is this way you could configure the global auto scaling behavior. Mm. Now, in the next step, we want to update the default behavior, and the default behavior is um, Knative will scale your applications based on concurrency, which means really concurrent um, requests coming into the system, so uh, in-flight requests. And um, the default configuration is you have, or each pod can handle 100 concurrent requests. And um, this is something we want to modify here. We say, okay, we um, limit this concurrency um, to one, so each pod can only handle one concurrent request, and we additionally um, put a scale window to, to, to 10 seconds. That means if within a time frame of 10 seconds um, no requests are coming in, Knative, Knative will start scaling down um, the specific pods. Let us um, update our service with this configuration. This results in a new revision because we've con uh, we have a different scaling behavior configured right now and you see also here that we have now a revision 2 deployment running and you see it also here a new pod is there with revision 2 
And let us also revision, uh, list the revisions with the CLI and you see there is a second revision and all the traffic is going to our new revision. And this is the default behavior, by the way, um, with Knative. So whenever you deploy a new configuration, new image, whatever, that results in a new revision, all the traffic will be shifted to the new revision. Um, the next thing we want to do, we want to um, do a little load test, produce some load, and we use, in our case, Ford.io, which is a little performance tool from the Istio ecosystem. And it is here configured for 20 seconds. Um, we create 10 threads and produce like 40 um, requests per seconds across all these threads. This should be a little bit of concurrency and we hit our one of our endpoints here and we should see some of the pods coming up. If we start this one, um, yeah, you see it was scaled to zero and then 10 threads are uh, 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 at the same time producing requests. So this is why a lot of pods are now scaling up. You see down on the left side, we have 14 pods uh, running here and the first ones are already terminating And you see now the test has finished. We have one running pod and after 10 seconds, this one will also scale to zero or will be in a terminating state. Um, yeah, so that was just a brief um, look at um, scaling on, on based on concurrency. And the next thing we want to do, we want to switch to request per seconds. This is another option you could use. Um, with auto scaling. So you specify this by um, putting an annotation with uh, metric RPS, which means uh, request per seconds and a scale target of one. Um, actually, this is like every container um, can handle a one request per second. And we also specify here a scale max of 10, which means uh, the maximum scale boundary is 10 containers, uh, whatever the traffic will be. Um, yeah, let us update our service with this new scaling behavior and also based on RPS. By the way, you could also use horizontal pod autoscaler for your scaling configuration. These are the two options you have with the Knative autoscaler. And now we have a third revision running here, by the way. So again, we, we change the scaling behavior, which results in a new revision, right? So um, what we do right now, let me bring this pot again here on the side. Um, we again produce some load this time from one thread with eight queries per second. And we should also see now some pots coming up and we um, shouldn't see maximum 10 pots. There shouldn't be more, right? Um, so they're coming up, they're coming up. Looks good. Nine and 10 pots. And our um, test has ended as well. And now again, some of the pots are scaling down. So yeah, that was basically an example of um, the request per second based auto scaling of Knative. And let's uh, list the revisions again. So we have now three revisions, um, each with a different auto scaling behavior. And um, the traffic always go to the latest revision. So this is in our case, revision number three, all the traffic is going there. So this is actually our production, uh, productive version of our service. So the next step, in the next step, I want to um, create a new application to show you some traffic shifting. And for example, our developers, they have created a new version of the application and want to deploy it, but they don't want to shift all the traffic to the new revision. They first want to test it. And in this case, um, we want to pin all the traffic to our current revision number three. And this is what we do right here. So we update the service and say all the traffic, so 100% of the traffic, is going to revision number three. This is what we do. And by applying this update, this doesn't result in a new revision. So if you just um, adjust the traffic distribution, this doesn't create a new revision. Um, now the next step is we 
um, create our new um, version of our application. Um, in our case, I just specified a new environment variable, but in reality, this would be a new container image, for example. Um, so this is our green version. So revision number three is the blue version. This is the green version. Let us do that. This creates now a new um, revision of our application, but all the traffic should stay on revision number three because we pinned it there. And you see it also, if you list the revisions, 100% of the traffic is going to revision number three. Um, let us test this, that it actually works as expected. So we produce again some load just for 10 seconds to make sure that we only see um, uh, revision number three deployments coming up here. And yeah, you see, this is uh, all the traffic is going to re revision number three, not to our newest one. So it works as expected. So what we now want to do is we want to test our latest green revision. And uh, one way to do it is by tagging it, because uh, if you tag a specific revision, this will also create a dedicated request uh, uh, sorry, a dedicated route um, to this specific revision. And this enables your pilot customers, your developers um, to access a specific dedicated revision. Let us do that. And now we should also see in the web console some change. Let us switch here. So we see now there is now the revision number three and 100% of the traffic is going to this revision from our official route. So this is kind of where the production workloads, uh, workload comes in. But now the tag has produced this route here. So a dedicated um, external access to this specific green revision. And now we are able to test our new version. And if we're, um, we can also see it here. So if, you're, if we are ready with it, then we can do an AB deployment or a canary deployment. Yeah, just the way we want. So you see it here. So we have tag green, but still all the production traffic is going to revision number three, which is our production workload. Let us also check the, the routes right now in the KNAVE serving, serving in, ingress. And you see now there is additionally to our production route, we have now for our specific green version revision, there is a dedicated route. So this way I can now test a specific revision without affecting any production workload or something. Um, yeah, and the step we want to do right now is exactly this. We, we want to proceed with a canary deployment. Um, so we um, specify a traffic distribution of 20% of the traffic should go to version green and 80% to our current production workload, which is revision number three. Let us configure this and um, check again the revision. And we see it also here. So tr this is our con conf current configuration. 20% of traffic is going to green, 80% to number three. It's also the same in the web console. If you look here, 20% there, 80% there. So we test now this configuration and we expect a traffic distribution of 80% and 20%. So we should see a little bit more um, revision number three deployments. And yes, so we see like um, five, six pots of number three and two um, green revisions here. So this is kind of what we've uh, expected here in this case. So this is exactly how it works. And basically with that, um, I come to the end of the Canadian Serving demo today. So if you want to start with um, Knative yourself, you could go to developersredhat.com. There is the OpenShift sandbox link. So you can click at the link and um, sign up for an account. So you will get an account, um, uh, 30 days uh, free access to a shared OpenShift environment. Knative is installed in this environment as well as a uh, browser-based um, IDE. So just sign up and get started with Knative on your own. Um, 
Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time with Knative Eventing. Thank you very much.